Greenwood and the Caribbean Climate Hub of the U.S. Forest Service International Institute of Tropical Forestry designed the Artisan Ecotour Program in Puerto Rico to strengthen the connection between the island's tropical forests and its vibrant community of wood artisans, aiming to build a more resilient and sustainable local economy. Today, we're looking at woodworking design and its sources of inspiration with two master woodworkers, a continent apart, Michael Fortune in Canada and Rene Delgado in Puerto Rico. Really like that idea. This is a uh, maho. Brought together virtually, Rene and Michael will create sculptural furnishings inspired by nature and built in their own shops. Following catastrophic hurricanes Maria and Irma, which devastated Puerto Rico's economy and left millions of valuable trees on the ground, the gears began to turn. Maria opened the opportunity to work with wood that normally I will not uh, had that opportunity. So I, I got in contact with a lot of aceitillo, uh, majo, wood that we gather from the street. We bought from small mills. When we start teaching woodworking classes again, a bunch of people came to the shop. It was like seeing the trees, seeing the wood open the desire to have some relation or some, some contact with the wood. The whole notion of being able to uh, use some of that timber is, wow, uh, that's a, um, an incredible opportunity. I'm standing in my workshop here outside of the city of Toronto. I design furniture for private residences all over North America and beyond. I'm essentially doing uh, work by commission and it's important that uh, what I design, I really want to make. Craftsmanship, techniques, machines, it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a world of knowledge, experience, but the design process is another story. You know? Yeah, I couldn't agree more on that. Mm -hmm. I have to walk between my uh, workshop and the house and you know, various cars drive in and drive out and so on. And the uh, pattern that tires leave in the snow is absolutely amazing. The relationship of the arcs and the negative spaces created is, uh, absolutely fabulous and the number <laughs> of uh tables and chairs and so on that i've done over the years you know it makes observing your environment a really quite a wonderful reservoir of ideas that's interesting because i'm the opposite side than you i mean no snow in puerto rico that's for sure <laughs> but i got i got the same experience you know, like you, but not in the snows, of course, you know, it's, it's no, the, la yeah. the landscape, the sky. The... I live yeah. next to the, to a lake, you know, yeah. that's my backyard. So I got all kind of images, you know, you know, you're looking snakes on, on the trees and all kind of crazy stuff. It's like wood is an organic form, you know, the tree is an organic form, but we cut it on, on bars that are straight and you have straight lines. So taking a straight form and, and returning to organic form, that's cool for me. Yeah, I uh, am intrigued by that. My grandma used to say, the tree that grew up bended will never be straight. In Spanish, it's palo que nace doblado, jamás su tronco endereza. And the name of this piece is the dance of the hammers. And I have two hammers, they are the, exactly the same technique. I got another sample here. Here uh, at the end, you know, I was more playful with it. So in order to do that, I use two jigs and the A, that is the first one, I take the straight form, just put it here. I scribe the line. And then make cuts on the bandsaw. And it's gonna look something like this. Okay. 
And from there, I go to the router using a pattern bit, and then I make this line straight. And from there, I return here to the jig B, and I do the same. Make a cut on the bandsaw, go into the router, and I'm end with this form. And the trick comes that now I use a, a round over bit, and, and I round one edge, next edge, and I'm gonna end with a form like this. And using that technique, I, I make a lot of fun stuff, you know, right here. I use the same technique to make the legs for this tool. That's a maho. Candlesticks, for me, this is a very playful project. The wood you're using, uh, the big block, what, uh, what wood is that? Mango. Oh, wow. But, uh, Isn't that amazing? But it was a chunk of mango from Hurricane Maria. That was three years ago. So the, yes, uh, the, yeah. the wood get rusted, uh, got uh, malt. And Here in <laughs> Canada, we have maple that uh, spalts beautifully as, mm -hmm. uh, as well. Yeah. So I'll be interested when I'm in uh, Puerto Rico to uh, play with some of the, the spalted uh, mango. Sure. It's amazing because it got crazy colors, uh, grades, uh, blue, yellow, you know, and, 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 and all of that is supposed to be a uh, pa parasite or, or how you say it? Yeah. Ongos. Ongos. Yeah. These are candlesticks. So I took the technique, this is a bounce technique using templates. And I have the side A. Side B. Yeah. The cutting on the bounce Ah, oh, that's, uh, that's clear. Yeah. So I turn the extremes on the lathe, and then the shaping that I did part of it in the on the lathe, and so the you, other half. You're using the uh, lathe to grip the part to make exactly. it easier to work on. Sure. Exactly. Using grinding tools, sanding, and everything. Oh, and I see you've got uh, excellent dust collection in your uh, uh, sanding area there. Yeah. So I feel that I'm scratching the surface using these ideas of uh, getting organic forms out of a stray chunk of woods. Yeah, you know, here in Canada, I do own my own sawmill. And a lot of the timber that I'm cutting is uh, trees that have had to come down for a building project or something of that, uh, that nature. Or uh, like the ash I'm using, of course, is being killed off by uh, insects, the uh, emerald ash borer. Recently, I was teaching in uh, New Zealand and, uh, and I'm observing the environment. And one of the things that uh, really struck me was a very, very small bird called a fantail. You have a, a tail that sticks up vertically. And there's this amazing pattern. So I started to play with that, and that eventually uh, morphed into a chair. The technique here is called coopering. And uh, coopering is a, a technique of wine barrels, whiskey barrels, and so on. And so it's a, you know, an age-old technique that I'm uh, using in a creative manner. These parts have to fit perfectly, by the way. And I've used to do that the bandsaw. And uh, when we're teaching our course, Renee and I will show you um, how to set it up to uh, give you the result you're truly after. So I've gone ahead, done my mock up in pine, but when I've made the decision, yes, that's exactly what I've got in mind, then I go ahead and build more complex jigs.
the reason I've gone to this extent here to uh, build more formal jigs that are going to give me exactly what I've got in mind, because I'll be doing eight of these chairs at the very least. And by uh, knowing how to design and build the jig, um, that is going to eliminate an awful lot of hand fitting and so on of a huge volume of parts to create the coopered back and the seat. And the actual shapes were free handed on the uh, on the bandsaw. And that's one of the things I uh, really like to uh, show the participants when um, we're working together is how to draw a line and then cut within virtually thousands of an inch of freehand to that uh, to that pencil line. And so now this jig is similar to what uh, Renee has done. I start out with a square blank, place it on this side of the jig here. Um, that gives me this shape. And then I take that shape, swing it around, and install it for this side here. And essentially, I'm doing that um, nine times to create the back of the chair. And the seat is um, a different jig. It's over here because the shape and the, the fan pattern is different. I make 11 parts on, uh, on this jig. Whatever the method is, whatever the uh, woodworking process is, there's always 10 different ways to do it. And uh, from a design perspective, you know, I've mentioned the um, tire tracks in the snow here. I've mentioned um, a bird I encountered in uh, New Zealand. I am really excited about uh, what I'm going to find in uh, Puerto Rico. Since we are an island, we can go from the mountains and in about 15 minutes, we're going to be on the ocean shore. Or, or you can go to old San Juan, be in contact with history, because it's not just the tooling, it's not just the woodworking, it's not just the band saw. In our project, we are going to go to the Junque, we're going to go to the rainforest, yeah. you know. Perfect. And, and it's a perfect, perfect way to combine our technical background and experience with the creative ideas, the creative inspiration background, so we can make that connection. Yeah, and that's uh, that. I am. I can't tell you how much I am looking forward to mm -hmm. uh, that. Greenwood and the USDA Caribbean Climate Hub have teamed up to offer a series of artisan eco tours, where participants will join expert craftsmen to learn skills using salvaged tropical hardwoods. Michael Fortune and Rene Delgado will focus on furniture design and construction. Other workshops are being developed on sculpture and carving, wood turning, and luthery. In addition to woodworking, participants will immerse themselves in the source of these beautiful woods, learning about climate change, forest management, and the benefits to be harvested from salvaged timber. The forests of Puerto Rico are home to more than 750 tree species. But like forests everywhere, they're under increasing threat from hurricanes, drought, fire, and pests. Now, more than ever, a holistic approach that supports value-added wood products from well-managed forests can provide a range of benefits for the local economy while reducing carbon emissions. We hope you'll join these exciting adventures in woodworking, inspired by nature, the Puerto Rican landscape, and culture. Check out this page for more information and to let us know if you're interested. We'll keep you posted. Hasta Puerto Rico.